Trophy, weather rates certified 11 years in a row. It's so fun to see the graphics showing mm. what exactly is going on, even from above us. Really cool, Anna. Well, we and see, we live through it. Yeah, yes. I was going to so say, we, <laughs> we see it from First above, hand. but we are dealing with it down yes. below, right? As we put on our snowshoes and head out, we get another winter storm impacting the state as we head through the overnight and into tomorrow. Live look at Alta, where they're getting a break in the action, but they picked up 21 inches in the last 24 hours. Winter storm warning holds on in this area and newly extended expanded to include the southwest desert live view from Cedar City cloud cover increasing it's freezing there temperatures will continue to drop this is one of the spots hitting that winter storm morning at 8 p.m. it's going to remain in effect all day tomorrow accumulating snow expected I'll show you exactly how much winter storm warnings for the Wasatch front and back Wasatch Mountains and back I should say that is going to hold on through tomorrow evening at 5 p.m. but we have expanded those warnings central southern Utah the mountains under the warnings but then the southwest desert that includes places like Cedar City Milford Beaver we know that accumulating snow on the way for those valleys Kanab's part of this so Escalani, and we know that the snow is going to churn overnight and through the day. Now, temperatures should keep St. George out of the mix, but Zion National Park underneath that winter storm warning as well. That will hold until Thursday at 5 a.m. So you can see a prolonged period of snowfall with this winter system favoring southern Utah as we get through the next little while. Live look from Enzyme Peak. I love this camera. Our ABC4 camera shows the cloud cover moving in. We've got clean air out there. Temperatures were in the 40s, dropping into the upper 30s right now. We have that southerly flow, gusty conditions holding on. We saw gusty southerly winds yesterday as well. That's going to change, but we know that they're out there right now. No wind advisories, but we will see breezy conditions, and that's going to add to travel impacts because blowing snow potential is there for southern Utah towards the Wasatch Plateau, southeastern Utah. What you're seeing in yellow is the potential for road slush because we get widespread snow for our Wednesday. Not heavy accumulations in the north, but we will see some. These are the southern roads that will be great impacted I-15 through Black Ridge. I know Washington County looking at heavy snow and blowing snow. SR9 is right through Zion National Park, and that's going to be slick. 89 from Long Valley down to Kanab, blowing snow expected at times. And then SR12, which is south central Utah, that goes towards Capitol Reef. Slick conditions expected there, so those roads heavily impacted. Let me show you the reason why. Warm sector of the storm, keeping us fairly mild. We see how that wet weather fills in by ABC4 News at 10. It's in the southwest desert. Southern Utah comes up through Castle Country, and then even in the north, for the northwestern corner of the state. This area of low pressure will track through the Beehive State. It's got a counterclockwise flow that's going to keep snow churning. Here we are by 4 a.m. The morning commute promises to be a little sloppy, so give yourself some extra time. That low by 7 a.m. still bringing impacts to northern Utah, I-15, and the southern portion of the state where we see heavier snowfall. Cold air behind that front really going to make its presence known. By 1 p.m., it's smack dab in the middle of the state, and we see snow showers. It's going to keep snow in the mountains, but snow showers in the north, heavier snow down south. Eventually, this is going to push over to the east. More showery snow behind it, counterclockwise, given that wraparound moisture by 5 p.m. tomorrow. Later on, as we get towards midnight, it's really a southeastern Utah storm, but it clears through the overnight. And by early Thursday, quiet conditions at 8 a.m., and we'll actually see a break throughout the state on Thursday from this very active pattern. How much more snow? Great question. 8 to 16 in the northern mountains. You winters could go 6 to 12 here, 8 to 16 in central Utah, and another 1 to 2 feet down south. Pine Valley Mountains, Bryan Head, looking at really heavy snow accumulations here. 1 to 4 in northern valleys, so minimal impact in the north, but we could see some accumulation. 2 to 6 in central Utah, 5 to 10 in the south, so the further south you go, the more snow you get. A trace to 3 inches in portions of Washington County. Three to eight on the benches. Mountain Valley's at four to ten. Castle Country going two to five. The basin doesn't get a tremendous amount from this. Thirties, four tomorrow. Thunder snow potential in southeastern Utah. Thirties for the I-15 corridor. Forty-five in St. George. Where after tomorrow we head into Thursday and we dry out. Yeah, we'll see a gradual warming trend with our daytime highs, but we don't quite make it to the 60s, which is where St. George should be this time of year. Wasatch Front, snow potential tomorrow. Brush by system. Friday, latter half of the weekend and into next week, another chance of some snow coming through. Temperatures remain below average. It is an active pattern. We are saying goodbye to February and March is definitely coming in like a lion. Glenn, Emily, 